I have been waiting weeks for my opportunity to shoot this Comet C2022 E3 ZTF. I finally got that break. The good news was no clouds at night. The bad news, the moon was almost full. And as you know, when it's that bright, it's, it's casting shadows. It's throwing light up across the sky, wreaking havoc on any data. But I felt I had to take the opportunity because this thing isn't going to be around for much longer. And next time it'll be here. 50,000 years to orbit the sun, so none of us are going to be around for its next pass if it even makes it back around. So the resulting image that you'll see at the end of this video isn't the greatest. I did get the comet. I even got some of the ion tail, but again, the moon washed out a lot of that data, so it's really faint. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you how to stack a comet in Cyril. I know a lot of people use Deep Sky Stacker or Pixinsight, so I just wanted to cover Cyril for you to give you another option, another free option because it's a free software for you guys, and walk you through the process. It is a little involved, it can seem daunting at times, but when you run through it a couple times, it'll be fine. It's not as bad as it seems. So let's get to it. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Alright, so running version 1.0.6 is zero. Before we get started, just want to show you where I have all my lights and calibration frames. Right off my C drive, folder called Astrophotography, and then one called Comet. I have my biases, darks, flats, and lights. As I've mentioned in previous videos, you need to have these four folder structures named this way for the script to work correctly. I'm also going to create a new folder in here just called new files you can create it whatever you want it's just a place to store the new files as we go through it makes it easier to find them when we're done so we'll minimize that we're going to hit our home button and select our comet folder and click open and then come up to scripts and osc pre-processing so we'll let this run over here and once it's done stacking we'll get started Okay, our stacking is complete. This is the point usually when you're running Cyril for a normal session of a nebula or galaxy that we would come over to open and we would open our result.fit file. We're not going to do that for the comet, but I am going to jump back over here to my folder structure to show you the new process directory. And this is always created. We generally don't worry about it when we're just doing a nebula session. And it is filled with our biases and our stack biases and dark and stack darks and just a ton of files in here so this is the folder we're going to be working in today so we need to change our home directory in Cyril so we're back up to the blue house button here and we're gonna double click on process and click on open the next step is we're gonna come over here to sequence and what we're doing right now is we're creating our our star stack this is gonna be alliance to the stars and not the comet and then when we're done with that step we'll move to creating a stack for the comet where it's aligned to the comet but not the stars so again on the sequence tab and then you want to hit the blue search sequences button and what we're looking for is pp underscore light underscore dot seq select that and then we're gonna come down and take our view out of linear Put it in auto stretch and we can jump real quick over on the rgb this is showing us our first file within the sequence as you can see in the top right corner here again most things that you do in serial you can't do them on the rgb tab you have to be on one of the color channels so i'm going to work on green and the first thing that we're going to do with the files in our sequence is run a background extraction so image processing background extraction we're going to change our interpolation method and the degree order from four to one these are the two settings that Cyril recommends and if you deviate from these two at all you'll get a pop-up message warning you that you don't need to be that aggressive with your settings and that this is what they recommend to run a background extraction with so samples per line I've got a 20 grid tolerance I'm gonna to bump that up to four and we're gonna click generate Make sure we got good coverage of samples all the way around and i am just going to right click on these samples around the comet just to remove them so it doesn't interfere with any of the coma or anything else around the comet itself i don't want that to be determined to be the background once that's done we can hit compute background and before we apply it we're going to tick this box down here that says apply to sequence 
prefix you can leave at the default bkg underscore this is simply going to be all of the files with the background extraction applied new ones will be created with that prefix and we'll see that here in a few minutes so go ahead and click apply and you can watch down on the bottom here as it's going through and doing a background extraction on every image within our pp light sequence okay so background extraction has completed up in your sequence name here you see it changed from the pp light to the bkg pp light so it selected the new sequence that it just created where it applied all the background extractions to the files so ensure that you're on the correct sequence if you're not you can just click the pull down menu and, and select the bkg file now we need to set a reference frame so we're going to come over and click on open frame list the default reference frame is number one reference image is checked up here the reference frame is basically just how you want the comment framed when is when we're at the final process for it i have 60 frames here so i am just going to pick one in the middle which would be 30 and then come up here and tick reference image and then we can close the frameless box now we're going to do a photometric calibration um, when i do the color calibrations i like to sit on the rgb tab so i can see more of a visual the change as it occurs we're going to apply background calibration to our reference image that we have open right here the thing is is we're viewing this file through our sequence right now so if i was to come up and say image processing color calibration you can see both of these options are grayed out and that's why it's because we're viewing this within the sequence so we actually need to open file number 30 so we're going to go to open make sure we're in our process directory and like I said before, there's a ton of files in here, so make sure you select the right one. You can always use the file name up here in the top right corner as your reference. So we're looking for BKG, PP, Light, and 30. That's it right there. So we'll go ahead and open that. Now when we come over to image processing, color calibration, our two options are available to us again. So we're going to do a photometric color calibration. And this, you need, you need your right ascension and declination coordinates. And this depends on what you're shooting with. If you have a dedicated astronomy camera and uh, those coordinates have been stored in that file, then you should simply be able to click get metadata from images and this will be populated for you. In my case, I shot with my Canon mirrorless and the same thing would happen with a DSLR. You probably won't have those coordinates in the files, so you're going to have to go find them yourselves. The, there's a new there's numerous ways to do this i usually use stellarium but there's some configuration you need you need to do with stellarium in order to be able to locate the comet and i know not everybody uses stellarium so i'm going to show you guys a way that everybody can use without needing to install software or configure software and that is an online planetarium called the skylive.com so I'll leave the link down in the description. Once you're up on this page, just where it says locate object, we're going to put in the comment. So C0 or C2022 E3 ZTF. There's the comment we're after now. And it shows it to us in the sky. But this is today at the time of the recording where the comet currently is at. We need to get the RA and deck coordinates from the night in time when I shot my images. So the way I do that is come back into my lights folder and just look at the timestamps that are on each of the files. So you can see here, we'll just go with the first one. You don't have to, you know, over an hour, the sky didn't move that much. So we're going to go with February 3rd at 10 o'clock. So back over to the sky.com and click your little clock icon here. And then change your date and time. So February 3rd at 10 o'clock p.m. All right, so now our date and time matches the timestamp on our light file. And what we're after here is the second line here where it says right ascension and declination. So the first one we need is right ascension, which is five hours and 30 minutes. So back into Cyril, five hours and 30 minutes. And now we need to get the declination, which is 58 degrees and 18 minutes. And 
Make sure your focal distance and your pixel size is correct or close enough. Mine, these numbers will work, but to be exact, 250 my focal length because I shot this with the Red Cat and my pixel size is 3.72. Rest of the stuff you could just leave at the defaults and click OK. A console window will come back up as it's doing the calibration for you and on the bottom here it says that it's been applied. Click close and very important step when this is complete and I say very important because the numerous times that I ran through this process, this was the step that I kept forgetting to do. But you want to make sure you come over here in the top right and click your save button. So it'll save that color calibration to our reference image that we have open. If you don't do that, then things are going to start going sideways with the next steps that we go through. Because again, this is our reference image, right? This is what it'll be looking at for everything else. Okay, now we're going back over to our sequence tab and you can see our sequence. There's nothing in our sequence field and that's because we opened this number 30 file directly. So it cleared the sequence. So just click anywhere in this pull down and we want to reselect our background PP light sequence. Once that opens, verify in the top right corner that our reference image is still open okay next step we're going over to our registration tab make sure your registration method is global star alignment everything else remains the same these are your defaults and just click go register okay registration is complete we're going to go back to our sequence and you can see it changed once more same same sequence name we had before but now it's prefixed with an r underscore for registered the one thing the registration does is it will determine what it thinks should be the best reference file, which in normal circumstances is what you want. But in our case, doing the comet stacking and the star stacking, we want to make sure our reference image is the one being used, the one that we chose. So you can see here in the top right corner, number 30 is no longer the reference image. It's number one. So we want to set that back. So back over to open frame list, scroll down to 30. And again, tick the reference image box up on the top. Now we'll see our change reflected up here. We have our sequence opened and our reference image is file number 30. Okay, one more step to complete the star stacking is to go to the stacking tab. We're going to use the Windsor Eye Sigma clipping for the rejection type. Our Sigma low and high values are three. These are all default settings, so for the stars, this is good. We are going to give this a custom name and save it in our new directory that we created that I was showing you earlier. So if we come over to our comet directory, here's the new files folder, and I'm just going to click up here, right click and copy the path, and then just paste it in the front with the backslash, and we're going to call this our star stack. Once you get that in place, just click start stacking. Okay, our stacking is complete. And if we jump back over into our folder, we see our new file. So that's the star stack. Step one's done. Now we're going to move to creating our stack for just the comet. So back over to the sequence tab. Make sure we have our registered background PP light.seq file loaded. We're going to go to our registration tab and we're going to change the registration method from global star to comet and asteroid registration. Back over to sequence. We're going to click open frame list. If this message pops up, that's fine. Just click on load another image. And here we want to select the first image in our sequence. What we're going to be doing is instructing Cyril where the comet was at the start of the night and where it ended up at the end of the night during our session. So it'll be able to track its movement and stack based on the comet. So we're going to select the first file, click the X to close the frame list. We're going to come back over to one of our color channels because again, we can't work on the RGB tab. So I'm going to go to green and left mouse button click and we're just going to draw a box centered around our comet just like that. Back over to the registration tab and click on pick object in number one. Again, back to sequence, back to open frame list. This time we're going to scroll down and select our last image in the session. Close that box and you can see the comet move between the first and the last image. I'm just going to put my mouse in the, 
middle of the box, hold the left mouse button down and move that box right over the comment like that. Come back over to registration and this time we're going to click on pick object in number two. And that's all we need to do for the registration. We have the comment selected in our first image and the comment selected in our second image. All we need to do now is click go register and we'll let that finish. It'll be pretty quick. There we go, registration complete. Now it's stacking time. So over to the stacking tab. And this, depending on your data, you may need to play with these settings to get the best results. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I shot this and the moon was probably 95% illuminated. It was very bright. So it washed out a lot of things, caused a lot of gradients for me. When, the, when Cyril stacks on the comet, these stars will end up kind of trailed They'll be faint, but depending on the data, they could be brighter than you want it to and it makes it a little bit difficult to completely remove them in post-processing. So I'm going to run this for now in the default settings with the rejection type being set to Windsorized Sigma Clipping and leaving our Sigma low and high values at 3 just so you guys can see what I was dealing with. And we're going to change the name. We call our Star Stack Star Stack. So we're going to call this one Comet Stack. Again, Got the path to my new files folder, and I'll just click start stacking. Okay, stacks complete, and if you look, you can see the star trails, streaking artifacts, whatever you want to call them, um, in the background. I found the best settings for my data was to go from the Windsorized to just the standard sigma clipping, and then change my sigma low and sigma high values to one. I'll still have those trailing artifacts, but they're a, they're a little bit dimmer. So I'm just gonna click start tracking again. It'll overwrite my last stack and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, stacking is complete. And if you watch the screen right before it loaded up our new stack, you should have hopefully been able to see that it actually dimmed down, made them a lot fainter in the background. So it's a little bit easier to work with in post-processing. We'll jump over the RGB tab just to see the color. Okay, almost done. Our, our stack is done, but we are going to do some cropping and stretch it before we move it into Photoshop. So we're going to come over to the conversion tab. And what this is going to allow me to do is to load both our star stack and our comet stack into a new sequence. So when I do the cropping and the stretching, it'll be applied to both images at the same time. So we have two images cropped at the same exact dimensions and stretched equally as well. So the way you do that is, again, on your conversion tab, hit your plus button down here, back up into our comet directory. We're gonna go into our new files folder, and there's our two stacks that we just created. I'm holding the control button down and selecting both of them, and then click add. Need to give your sequence a name. I just call it comet and stars. Can name it whatever you like and click convert it says ready you're done if we come back into sequence you can see we are now loaded with our comets and stars sequence and it is currently showing us image number one which is our comet so at this point again jump back over to my green channel and i'm just going to do a quick crop staying away from the edges pretty aggressively because i know there's a lot of stacking artifacts there and then right click and instead of just clicking crop like we usually would this time we're going to say crop sequence which would apply to our sequence that we have open and the two files within it so crop sequence it's telling us it's going to create files and prefix them with cropped underscore that's fine click apply and now our crop is complete on both images within the sequence Again, it created another sequence called crop. So now again, we have file one open and we are going to go, we're going to go back to our RGB tab just so we have a better visual. We can see some colors and we're just going to do a quick auto stretch on this. So we're going to change our view from auto stretch back to linear. We're going to come down to our histogram toolbox button, click that, and we're just going to apply a auto stretch algorithm to the image by using this little cogwheel button. So we'll click that. So now we are in a stretched state for the comet image. And because we want this stretch to be also applied to our stars image that's in our sequence, before clicking apply, we want to tick 
apply to sequence. There's our output prefix and then click apply. So again, we have a new sequence now, MTF cropped comet and stars. Okay, so now we're just going to save both of the images in this sequence, our comet stack and our star stack out of Cyril as a TIFF file. So one more step that I'm gonna do before I save the comet out to a TIFF file, and this is just me because you can see I've got some gradient going on on the top and the bottom here. This isn't a necessary step unless you have the same kind of issues. I'm going to just run another background extraction, so image processing, background extraction. I am gonna use the RBF method, our default settings, hit generate. Check that it looks good. I'm gonna back over to my green channel and unselect the samples around the comet. I can lightly see where the coma and everything is at and I can see the tail coming up here. So I'm gonna try and keep as much of the tail as I can, but I know it's not gonna come out very well because it's so dim and blends in with the rest of the artifacts in the background. So that, that looks good. We'll hit compute background. and apply all right so i like that so now we're going to right click save rgb image to tiff i'm going to delete that paste in our path to our new files folder and we're going to call this one comet 16-bit integer and save here's our file name of the comet that we just that we just saved out to a tiff so we need to open up the stars one same name except it'll be a number two so we're going to go open we're gonna scroll down to MTF. There's number one, the file that we have currently open, and we wanna open up number two, which is our stars. So in file two, you can see we have a lot of artifacts from the comet. This is the star stack. This is the image created from stacking all the stars. Uh, the little purple circles you see here are just where the comet started that night. And where it ended we're going to clean this up we're going to use uh, starnet plus plus to remove the stars and then in photoshop we'll get everything subtracted out uh, because of that artifact and just naming the files so they make sense when i look at them um, we're going to save this as a tiff and right click save rgb image as a tiff and instead of calling it stars even though it's the star stack i'm just going to call it artifact and we'll paste in our new files folder first but call it artifact 16 bit you can name it whatever you want it just helps me if i was to call this stars when we run it through starnet i like to call my output file dash starless so the file would be star dash starless which kind of doesn't make sense right so i'm going to leave it at artifact save and if we come back down into our new files folder we can see there's our artifact.tiff and our comet.tiff and the reason i use a new folder to put my files in is if you don't, by default, it'll put it in your process directory, and it, it just it can be painful to search around and look for stuff. So, so next step is Starnet plus plus, and just run that. We're gonna browse over to our new files folder, and we are going to select our artifact TIFF. And this is what I was talking about with why I called it artifact because it makes more sense when I do this and say dash starless click run and that'll take a minute okay starnet has completed so we'll just close that out and there's our new starless tiff so now we've got the three files that we need to go into photoshop so we're again holding the control button down i'm going to select artifact artifact starless and our comet file right click and open in photoshop so Photoshop will open each of these images in their own tab. So up top here, we have our comet. We have our artifact without the stars, so starless. And then we have our artifact with the stars. The first thing we're gonna do is come over to artifact-starless and control A to select the entire image. Control C to copy that selection. And then we're gonna go over to our artifact.tiff file and we're gonna control V to paste it. And you can see it pasted it in on its own layer. With layer one selected, our pasted layer, we're gonna change it from normal down to subtract. So now we have just the stars 
without the artifact of the comet in the middle of it. So right click on top of one of the layers, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to say flatten image. And then we're going to control A to select the image, control C to copy it, and then we're going to come over to our comet image and we're going to control V to paste it. You can see it created layer one with our stars. I'm just going to double click on the name layer one and rename it stars. You don't have to do this. I like to do it just to have a visual of which layer I'm working on. We're going to unlock the background layer and then double click on layer zero and we're going to call that one comet. We're going to click on the stars layer next and we're going to change our mode from normal to linear dodge add. You can do screen, you can do lighten, you can go through these and just see which one appeals to you the most. Uh, I'm going to be using Linear Dodge, and at this point we have our stacked stars image and our stacked comet image blended, blended together. Uh, we could call it done and save it off at this point, but we're going to do a little bit of processing just to try to darken that background and get some of the star trailing artifacts taken out. Not going to be able to get them all. So what I'll do is come over here on the stars layer and I'm going to tick the visibility icon to the left here to turn off the stars. Click on the comet layer since that's the one we want to work on. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but we did get the ion tail. It's shooting right up here. Again, I was shooting on a night when the moon was so bright it washed out a lot of the tail. And to make it worse, the tail is the same brightness as the artifacts that we have in the back. So. Our final image, I'm probably not going to end up being able to see much of the tail, if any at all, as we try to darken the background down, and, and you'll see that here in a, in a minute. I'm just going to do a few extra things here. Again, make sure you're on the comment layer, and we're going to come up to image adjustments, and I'm going to hit it with levels first, and we're going to take the shadows, and we're going to drag it over just to the end of that line, just to darken it up a little bit. Click OK. And then again, image adjustments in curves. And we're going to try and we're going to slide the blacks over to the beginning of the histogram. And you can see it's darkening the background. It's helping with the streaks that we're seeing from the stars, but it's also taking away some of our tail. But, you know, this is just a, a balancing act, a preference. We're just going to play around and try and get it somewhere where we think it looks good. So we'll say OK. And I want to try and bring out the colors a little bit more in this. So we'll go back up to image adjustments and hue and saturation. And we'll just bump the saturation up a little bit just to bring a little bit more of the green out. We'll say OK. You can see, you know, there's a lot of noise in the picture still. So I actually own Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise. So we're going to do a little bit of noise reduction. Again, optional step. Or if you have another way that you prefer to do noise reduction, you can absolutely do that. I'm going to back out our view a little bit more and see what this looks like. We're just on the clear settings. And yeah, that looks better. Let's see what the low light looks like. Yep, all right, I think I'm gonna run with that one. So we're just gonna click apply. It'll apply that noise reduction for us and put us back into Photoshop. And we're gonna turn our star layers back on just by hitting the visibility button to the left. And we can try and make that just a little bit darker. So back to image adjustments. We'll go into curves. Just bump this back over closer to the histogram. Hit OK and turn our stars layer back on. And I mean that that looks I mean it looks decent. I'm not crazy about the stars in the back, but again, moonlight really killed me that night. So I'm gonna call this done. Uh, all we would do right now is again right click on one of the layers, say flatten the image. And then we can come up to file and export and we'll do export as come up and select jpeg i'm going to crank the quality as high as it'll go hit the export button 
We're in our comment directory, so I'm going to go over to New Files, call it Comet, and hit Save. Once it closes, we are done. So there's our comment right there. If I just right click and we'll just open it up in the Photos app, there's our final image. You guys probably can't see it. The tail is there, but it's very, very faint. The moon hated me that night, as I said. So, But in general, I'm pretty happy with the results. It's all about getting better with your processing skills, and I'm still learning as I go here and learning new techniques, so I'll always have this data. Maybe I'll revisit it again someday. So I hope you guys found that tutorial helpful. Like I said in the beginning, I know it seems daunting at first, but run through it a couple times and you'll get it. It's not as bad as it seems. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment if you have any questions or any suggestions on how I can get that tail to pop more and get those artifacts out of the background like we were talking about. I appreciate everybody's time. I'll see you in the next video and clear skies.